All right, join me on page 158 of the Social Studies textbook. If you don't have the textbook out now, please get it out and follow along. So you notice along the top there is a timeline. You may be uh, referencing back to the timeline for the test or the study guide that we use. Uh, now we're going into the New Kingdom, and this is a map. If you look up at your screen, the ancient Egyptian empire in the New Kingdom period of Thutmose III, which we're going to be reading about uh, today. So follow along back to your text, the New Kingdom. You are there. It's the year 1360 BC, and a new king has recently come to the throne. He is different from the kings of the past. Oh man, it's almost like history is repeating itself. We have a new president, and he is different from the presidents of the past. He and his wife don't believe in the ancient Egyptian gods. They say there's only one god, the Aton, and they've commanded the people to stop worshiping the other gods. People are in an uproar. You hear some say that the king just wants to take power from the priests who serve the other gods. One thing is certain. This king and his wife are bringing change to the land. You wonder if this change will be good or bad for Egypt. Okay, turning to page 159, at the top, Children in History. Egyptian children. In ancient Egypt, children were considered to be gifts of the gods. In Egyptian art, children are usually shown with their parents or playing games. Archaeologists digging in Egypt have found the remains of toy animals carved out of ivory or wood. Toy boats, clay dolls, spinning tops, and balls made of leather skins filled with dry papyrus stalks or rags. Egyptians of all ages loved board games. Zanette, played on a 30-square board, was the most popular. Egyptian children also enjoyed wrestling, leapfrog, tug-of-war, and a game similar to hockey. Make it relevant. How were ancient Egyptian games and toys similar to and different from those of today? Well, tug-of-war, leapfrog, these are all familiar games. Uh, Continuing now, Kings of the Great House. The New Kingdom began in 1552 BC with the rule of Dynasty 18. During this time, Egyptian kings took the title of Pharaoh, meaning Great House. In earlier times, the word referred to the king's magnificent palace. Now it referred to the kings themselves. The power of the pharaohs was based in large part on gold. The Egyptians believed that the flesh of their gods was made of gold. Egypt's first full-time army began during the New Kingdom, under Dynasty 18. Egypt sent troops as far north as the Euphrates River. Egypt also conquered parts of Nubia, a land rich in gold. The pharaohs placed part of Nubia, also called Cush, under the rule of an Egyptian official. Queen Hatshepsut, Hatshepsut was one of the few women of, to rule Egypt as pharaoh. Under her reign, or time of rule, Hatshepsut sent armies into Nubia and southwestern Asia. She demanded that, they, that the conquered lands pay tribute to Egypt in exchange for protection, so kind of like taxes. She also sent a trading expedition south across the Red Sea. It returned with animal skins, myrrh, trees, ebony, and gold. Hatshepsut's stepson, Thetmos III, followed her as pharaoh. Under his rule, the Egyptian empire reached its greatest size. By 1450 BC, Egypt controlled lands from the fourth cataract in Nubia all the way north to the Euphrates River in southwestern Asia. And you can see that here a little bit. It goes down this and then here's over to the Euphrates River all the way over here. Oh, here's the Euphrates, yeah. Tigris and the Euphrates over here. So you can see it's stretching out of Egypt even under Thetmos III, if you're looking at your screen. 
Okay, continuing in your text, last paragraph on page 159. The early years of the new kingdom were a time of splendor. The Egyptians of this period built huge temples to the gods, larger than any before them. The temple of Amon-Ra at Karnak was the largest in all of Egypt. Okay, turning the page to page 160, a time of change. In 1364 BC, Amenhotep the fourth became Pharaoh. He and his wife, Nefer, Neferti, Nefertiti, brought change to Egypt. They abandoned the worship of Amon and other Egyptian gods. They favored a single god, the Aton, god of the sun. Amenhotep was so devoted to the Aton that he changed his own name to Akhnatum. Akhnatum? meaning servant of the Aton, and had the names of other gods removed from the temples and tombs. When he moved Egypt's religious capital to a new city, Akhetaton, he built large religious temples to the Aton. After Akhnatan's death, the throne passed to a nine-year-old boy named Tukhenhaten. That's King Tut for short. Under pressure from his advisors, he restored the old Egyptian gods and changed his name to Tutankhamun, or living image of Amon. At the age of 18, Tutankhamun died. I'm just going to call him King Tut. He was buried in a solid gold coffin in a tomb packed with treasure. In about 1289 BC, Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great, came to power. During his 65-year rule, Ramses II defended Egypt and made the kingdom prosperous. Early in his reign, he fought the Hittites. Later, he focused on building magnificent temples all over Egypt. By about 1215 BC, Egypt was slipping into decline. It was losing land to the Sea Peoples, invaders from Asia Minor, and lands near the Mediterranean Sea. Even so, Egypt managed to stay united through the end of Dynasty 20 in about 1075 BC. And you can see another timeline along the bottom of page 160 and 161, where it shows the Old Kingdom to the Middle Kingdom to the New Kingdom. Okay, join me on the top of page 161 now, Egyptian society. Historians have compared the, the structure of ancient Egyptian society to that of a pyramid. At the top was the pharaohs. Then came royal family members, priests, and nobles. Below them were craft workers, scribes, and merchants. Egypt's largest class came next. It included farmers and unskilled workers. At the pyramid's bottom were the slaves. Most of Egypt's slaves had been captured in war. Unlike slaves in some societies, those in Egypt could own personal items and hold government jobs. They were also able to earn their freedom. Most Egyptians lived in villages in rural or country areas. Only about 5% of Egyptians lived in the cities. Like in most ancient societies, men and women had very different roles in Egyptian society. Most government officials and crafts workers were men. For the most part, Egyptian women raised the children and ran households. In Egypt, women were highly respected and had more rights than women in some other ancient societies. For example, ancient Egypt, Egyptian women could own property and businesses. Education started at an early age in Egypt. Usually, only the children of the nobles learned mathematics, literature, and writing. Most boys learned their father's trades. Girls learned household skills and weaving from their mothers by the age of 12. All right, thanks for following along. You can now go back and continue on your social studies uh, worksheet in Google Classroom. Again, if you have any questions, though, please raise your hand. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.